Hello, welcome to LabVIEW Advantage. This video is the second part of the ESAL Software Development Introduction and Principles series in LabVIEW. As we discussed before, the first part of the presentation was based on the ESAL Software Development in which we compared between the traditional methods such as waterfall method with the ESAL Software Development method. Now in this like, second part of the presentation, We'll discuss on the how to implement the ESAL development uh, process in LAPI. So let's begin. Okay, before we start, let's discuss about the total number of global programmers. See in the bottom, uh, we have got uh, nearly 100 million programmers in the world, including LabVIEW. So after that, uh, we have got like a certified developers, associate developers, and artist architects that has been certified by the National Instruments. So in this case, on the top of the heap, we have got 952 certified LabVIEW architects. See, let's use the analogy over here. So like, uh, we'll ask the question first of all, what makes a good code, okay? So according to the Da Vinci, art is never finished but only abandoned. So basically, uh, we must have encountered when we were beginners or something like that, we didn't have any like uh, guidelines or anything, so like uh, we... Uh, mostly use code and fix method. We just start coding and then find out like uh, it's not going to work properly. Uh, sometimes it works, uh, sometimes it doesn't work. And even like if sometimes it works, it is very much difficult for us to uh, go and change the code, update the codes, and then like uh, reuse the code and everything. So now let's uh, compare between the search for the art perfection and then the bad codes. So basically, when an artist uh, does not use any methodology or something like that, what actually happens is uh, he or she uh, creates an art and then uh, sees that he or she is like satisfied with his code, uh, his or her code, because like uh, it's fine up to her perception and everything. But then, when like uh, the person, the artist, uh, visits any gallery or sees the work of other artists, he or she realizes uh, the technique could have been better. The art could become much more better. Uh, the bad codes are similar to the search for art perfection. So basically, in programming world, we talk in the world of words of uh, refactoring, modification, and extension. So like uh, refactoring, modification, and extensions are basically modifying the existing code, uh, rewriting the code if we're not satisfied with the code, and then we'll build hacks and adapters to uh, rectify those errors. So basically, uh, if we follow this procedure, we'll get the results such as uh, the code will be confusing because we didn't know, like uh, it does not uh, follow any procedure guidelines or anything. Requires more time because like we need to understand the code, what is going on, and everything. It increases the complexity and hence increases the cost. Cost. So what actually is the good code? So basically, according to the Robert C. Martin. Uh, he says that uh, old code should perform new function with new code without changing old code. So basically, the old code should not uh, be required to change uh, when we want to add another functionality in the same application. So basically, uh, before we understand about the good code, let's discuss about what the bad code is. So the bad code actually has got like a properties like rigidity, fragility, and non-reusability. Uh, we have got more of them, but like uh, let's discuss one of these three. These are the prominent ones. So rigidity means like uh, the design is very difficult to change. So basically, fragility is like uh, if I'm going to going to change, make a small change over there, the change will be propagated, and all the unrelated codes will also break down. And then non reusability means like it's very difficult to change because like it has got lots of like dependencies. So let's use another another analogy. So basically, the picture into the left hand side on the top is the uh, picture from Nepal. Basically, here as you can see, it's uh, rigid, it's fragile, and it's immobile as well. It's very difficult to make changes. Uh, we do not know what is going on, and uh, very uh, difficult and everything. And if we see into the right hand side, the card reader. Uh, supports only one card and some like that. So like it's very difficult. Uh, the scalability is not there. Uh, similarly, another picture we can see into the left hand side, and the final picture 
uh, shows the road in Bengaluru where this uh, summit was held. As you can see, the rain has completely destroyed the road and we got the puddles over there. So, uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope you have learned a little bit about the software engineering as well. Uh, please uh, like, comment and share this video and please subscribe to this channel for further lab videos. Thank you very much.